This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at how we can predict the gender of the patient based on the X-ray image using deep learning. So the data set over here is from SPR X-ray Gender Prediction Challenge. This video will be organized in the following way. First, I'll explain about the data. Then I'll explain at a high level how the code is organized. Then we will deep dive into the code. Okay, so first let's look at how the data is present over here in this data set. Okay, uh, so totally we have 22K files over here. Okay, size is close to 19.81 GB. Uh, you have both PNG images and CSV files. Okay, so what do we have in the data set? So we have a train underscore gender dot CSV file where we have an image ID and a gender okay and then we have corresponding test and train folders over here and corresponding to this image id there is an x-ray image present over here in this folder okay so zero stands for female and uh, one uh, stands for male so this is an x-ray image of a male patient uh, this is an x-ray image of a female patient okay and you have these details present in your train gender csv so this is your training data okay you have close to uh, how many columns over here so basically you have two columns and how many images you have close to 10.7 uh, 10700 images over here for training okay in testing you have close to 11700 images okay if you look at uh, sample submission gender basically here you have the image id and uh, you have dummy gender as 0.5 over here okay and this is close to 11747 entries and if you look at test you have 11747 uh, files over here okay so this is your data set now how would the solution be evaluated over here uh, your model will basically be evaluated on this metric which is area under roc curve for more details under uh, area under ROC curve, I would refer you to uh, this particular Wikipedia page which talks about ROC, uh, basically receiver operating characteristics. So here there is an explanation of the explanation of the area under curve. So you can check out over here. Okay. So to um, now develop a deep learning solution, the flow which I follow over here is that you have these input images which are present and you have your csv files right train.csv and sample submission.csv from that i will create train data frame and test data frame i will define some image transforms then i will be creating data sets and data loaders okay then i have to create and load a, a deep learning model then i'll be training the deep learning model and then i'll be inferencing the deep learning model on the test data okay uh, through which we'll get a submission file which we'll submit to the competition okay now let's go into our notebook right as i said the first step is to actually create our uh, train and test data frames okay so here are things which i import all the necessary libraries over here so i'm using this tim or pytorch image models to actually uh, you know instantiate my efficient net model which is a convolution neural network okay so the dl model which i am using deep learning model which i am using is efficient net and the library for that which i am using is basically this is a pytorch code so i am using pytorch image models or team library okay so this is python and pytorch is what i am using over here okay so the first step is basically uh, i am creating my test and train basically train and test data frames okay so my uh, input data frame train gender has two columns right so it has only the image id and gender okay so from this image id i have to get the file path so for that i have a small utility method over here which converts this number into a six digit file path because if you look at over here your input data if you go over here and look at the data right uh, under this particular uh, train folder as well as test folder the image 
you know file name has six digits whereas in your uh, input csv file right the image id is a single digit so there is a method to convert that and you know append it to this particular path to get the file name of the image corresponding to this image id so that is what i do over here okay um, then let us look at the distribution of the gender if you look at the distribution uh, you have more uh, x-ray images of female patients when compared to male patients slightly imbalanced data set okay so you have close to 6000 or little over 6000 uh, images of female patients a little over 4500 images of male patients in this training data okay and you can visualize one of these images you know by passing uh, the file path okay to cv2.im read and you can also show the gender over here and you can plot it over here so this is the first image basically of a female patient okay i have done another image visualization over here i'll not go into it so then what i do is that i can also read the test you know from sample submission dot gender csv again the image ids i can convert it into file paths so that is what i do over here okay and then i also create test x is equal to nothing but get the file paths and test y is the corresponding gender this is dummy okay but then i have to actually do the data split for my training so that is what i do over here i import train test split from sklearn.model selection right and i pass in the file paths and gender okay as my uh, you know uh, to the train test split and uh, you know uh, i want to use 95 percent of my data for training and five percent of data for validation okay so train x will have the list of file paths for training train y will have the corresponding gender information similarly val x and val y for validation okay so now where are we in this code flow we have created this we have created our test uh, data frame uh, in the train data frame we have also done a split to actually train and validation okay and we have created that data right so now uh, i have to actually uh, define some transforms and i have to also create this data set so first i'll create the data set okay for use uh, in my training my dl model okay so uh, this class extends torch utils dot data dot data set okay i call it as spr x-ray gender data set in the constructor i take a list of image files labels and transforms okay so that is what is done over here and in the get item method if you see i take the file path of a particular image with index and then read it and convert it into an uh, numpy uh, image array basically and then apply transforms on it i all i return the transforms uh, the transformed image and the lay corresponding label okay so that is this data set definition okay now i also have to define transforms okay so that is the definitions over here for transforms for training so i perform some uh, augmentation on the images by transforming it by say randomly horizontal flipping it rotation affine so on okay for the validation data set and the test data set i wouldn't do any transforms i'll just do resize okay um, now why is this resize important over here so the efficient net model accepts a particular input size over here okay so now in the code flow we have the data set okay we have transforms okay the data loaders are not yet created okay uh, but uh, let's move to the next step of loading our dl model okay uh, so if you look over here uh, for dl model uh, you need to install tim it is already installed otherwise you need to do it okay and then what i do over here is the number of classes is two because zero is for female and one for male so we have two classes the batch size is eight efficient net b4 takes as input 384 into 384 image rgb image basically so that is the image size 384 and here i load my pre-trained efficient net model okay so efficient net is equal to team dot create model efficient net b4 pre-trained is equal to true number of classes we have two number of channels is equal to three over here right because it's an rgb image then i check the device which is available i'm using gpu over here so torch dot device cuda if it is available else so here it will be cuda and then i move this model to 
the GPU. Okay. Then I need to define some uh, loss function and optimizer for training the deep learning model. So the loss function over here is cross entropy loss because we are doing binary classification. Optimizer is uh, Adam over here. Okay, so that is what is created over here. This I have explained the transforms. Okay, so now I create my data set, the training data set and validation data set over here by calling my data set uh, class by passing the list of files and the transforms. So that is done over here. I also create my data loaders for training and the validation data. Okay, so that is what is done over here. So now in this code flow, we have almost completed up to this stage. Okay, now we have to train our DL model. Okay, so how do we train typically in uh, you know, PyTorch. So here is a visualization of an image in the training data set after applying all the transforms. This is how it looks like. Okay. So how do we train in PyTorch? In PyTorch, how we train is that, you know, we call the train mode for the particular model. Okay. For every epoch, we iterate through all the batches. Okay. Uh, we push the inputs and labels to the device for every batch. Okay. Then we call optimizer.0 grad. We pass the inputs to the network. Okay, to the model, the mo and we get the outputs. Okay, then we need to create uh, calculate the loss function. Okay, we also get the predictions. We also calculate the loss function, and the loss has to be propagated backwards into the network for learning. Okay, and then we perform the optimizers on the to you know optimize our weights. Okay, and we can compute the loss and we can compute the accuracy for every uh, epoch basically. For every batch, we can compute it and then we can compute it for the whole epoch. Okay, so epoch is nothing but one iteration on all the batches of data in training. Okay, as well as uh, once we have trained in every epoch, we can also evaluate the model on the validation data. And similarly, on the validation data, we can compute our uh, accuracy and validation loss. Okay. So we do this for uh, say 30 epochs over here, right? And then we actually uh, save the model. So this is the method to save the model, okay? In a particular path, in a particular location, okay? So after running this, basically after 30 epochs, uh, you know, it shows that uh, our model has an accuracy of 98% on the train data. And on the validation data, it has an accuracy of 98.8. Okay. So in this way, we have actually in the code flow now even trained our model. Okay. Now we have to do an inference on the model. Okay. So when I tried doing inference in this particular notebook itself, there were some memory issues. So I created an another notebook for inference because anyhow, I have saved the model over here. Okay. Uh, in this training process, I have saved the model. Okay, so what I do is that I create a data set out of this model in Kaggle and then I can download this into my inference notebook, which is what I do over here. So the training process itself took somewhere close to, you know, uh, it was somewhere close to 15,657 seconds. And when I computed the number of hours, it's somewhere close to four and a half hours. So that was the training time. Okay, on close to 95% on the training data and validation on 5% of the data. Okay, so now let's go to inference. So in our code flow, now we have to do the inference, right? We have trained our model, we have saved it. Even though in our previous this thing, we created our test uh, data frame, we have to repeat it in our inference notebook. So in the inference notebook, what I do over here is that same set of imports. I have this uh, method to convert the file name which is image id which is a single number to a six digit number and append png you know get the path of the file name so then i read the sample submission okay and i apply the method on the image id to create my file paths and then i get test x and test y which are test x is nothing but the list of file names test y is nothing but the gender dummy gender basically okay then i have the same uh, data set to do actually load the images uh, basically and the file paths and the labels basically right again i have to instantiate the tim uh, what you call from tim i have to instantiate the efficient b4 but here pre-trained will be false number of classes is equal to two right channels is equal to three because rgb image here i am loading the 
pre-trained weights basically right whatever we have saved over here that is what i am loading over here by creating a data set and importing that data set over here okay then i can do efficient net dot eval and i am pushing it to the gpu okay because i am checking for the device if gpu is available i am using gpu in this case in this case uh, in this kaggle notebook and i def uh, define some transforms on the uh, images so this is similar to the validation transforms all i do is just resize and this is again 384 because this is the b4 model okay on which we uh, trained basically our trained model right so the image size should be same okay then i create my test data set and test uh, loader in a similar way to how i create my train data set and train data loader and then i have to evaluate it for every batch in the test loaders okay so iteratively batch after batch it will uh, basically i pass the image test image and i get the output and from that i get the prediction as stars.maxput outputs and i append this prediction to a list okay so now i have my predictions uh, so i can uh, append the gender basically the dummy gender i can replace by my original predictions from this model right and then i can write the image id and gender to a submission file which is my output file so once i run this uh, code this takes somewhere close to 432 seconds on uh, the gpu p100 instance and uh, it generates the output okay which is my submission.csv file so when i submit this particular uh, file i get a score of 0.97 uh, area under curve okay so this is a score which i have obtained by submitting this particular inference notebook so if i look at uh, you know my position in the leaderboard currently it is uh, somewhere close to 15th position so there have been other submissions which is much high over here somebody has even achieved a uh, area under curve of 0.99 okay so mine is around 0.97 okay so you can look at this notebook and maybe you can further fine tune the hyper parameters or something to see if you can improve the uh, you know results but the whole idea is that you can use efficient net as a deep learning model to uh, you know take an input image as an x ray image and then predict the gender from that x ray image using this particular approach okay uh, i hope this video on how you can use deep learning to predict the gender of a patient using their x ray image is useful for you if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel i'll make the link of these particular uh, you know notebooks as public and i'll also put them in the description of the video you can check it out you can also improve on this particular notebooks the inference as well as the training notebooks along with the res uh, resources for efficient net team what does area under roc curve mean see you in another video